Hello there everybody, how's it going? It's Jessie from Jessie Marie Does Stuff here on FlossTube and I am back on this Wednesday, July the 12th, 2017 with another update video. I know some of you are still probably sitting there watching my Friday update and so you're like, why are you back already? Why are you already popping back up in my newsfeed? Um, and the reason for that is that that video was crazy long. And I know that some of you really enjoyed that, and I know that some of you got a ton of stitching done. I heard that somebody got a super size max color hay done in the time that that video went. Um, <laughs> sorry, terrible joke. Anyway, um, I know that some of you really liked the long one, but I also know that that, that is not conducive to most people's schedule. Not everybody can sit down and, and just watch me ramble on and on for two hours. And it also took me five hours to edit it. And then it took me another three hours to get it uploaded. So I'm not trying to do that. I'm not trying to be this floss tube movie maker. Yeah, my videos are an hour long, but not two hours. Not, not two. Um, so I'm going to have to be a little bit more frequent, a little bit more consistent in my filming. And hopefully that will, will quiet things down. It will make it easier for you to get through your watch later lists. And it will make it easier for me to... Um, get through my editing. So there we go. Um, so what do we have to talk about today? Um, I have some q and I don't have a floss tube shout out, but I'm going to talk about why that is. Um, I have whip review. I have some, um, some plants as well as some plants that have changed. And so I have a few more projects to show you than I had originally intended. Um, and I'll go over that. Um, I also have some retail therapy, but like it's this big um, because I have some things in my mailbox that I didn't go get and I should have, but I didn't. Um, I also have my currently obsessing section, which is going to contain some information about books. So, hey, we're talking about books again. And then um, a very small knitting segment. If there's time, if this video isn't already over an hour, I'd like to do the 20 random facts. Uh, because that is a trend that I am trying to get on. Um, I tried to film my 20 random facts this weekend while I was doing a stitch with me because I thought, all right, instead of just watching this girl talk at you, um, you could stitch with me, literally. And then I would just spew random things about myself. Well, I'm having issues with my phone like I talked to you guys about last time and I can't film for more than three minutes. Four minutes. I was able to get one six minute clip on Sunday before it was like, nope, no more. And I wasn't about to deal with that while I was trying to stitch. So I just, I killed that idea. And so we're just going to do it face to face and you guys can stitch. You don't have to look at me. I don't think I'm going to be showing anything. I'm looking here. I've got my notes right here. I don't think there's anything that I'm going to be showing. So, um, you can just stitch away or knit away or fold the laundry or do whatever you do. Um, so we are going to do that if we get to there. And I'll let you know when we reach that point. So shall we get on with it? I think we shall. Um, it, oh, before I do, somebody's going to be wondering. My t-shirt, it says uh, one short day in New York City. Um, my brother and I in 2014 went to go see Wicked on Broadway. And it really was a very short day in New York City. We took the train from D.C. up to New York in the morning, spent the day tooled around New York, um, and then went to go see the show, had dinner at this place um, at Bryan Park, which was so good. Uh, best, very expensive spaghetti I've ever eaten. And then uh, took the train home that same day. So it was a very short day in New York City, but um, getting to see Wicked was cool. And so this was my souvenir. My brother actually picked this shirt out for himself, but I, I was like, I, I need that. I need that. So anyway. Um, okay, so let's go ahead and get started with the Q&A. And I have just a few questions this go around. Um, I have two questions from Bianca, and she has a channel here on YouTube, uh, Stitching My Love. It will be linked down below. Um, and her first question is, how do you bead? Uh, she said that her beads that are meant to be straight, they aren't going straight. And the way that I get my beads to lay straight is that I always, I shouldn't say that, I almost always 
put down a bead with a full cross. So I go through the bead twice. So you know, and I'm going to do a demo at some point of how I bead and how I use Nymo and all of that jazz. Um, but just a real quick, very basic run through. So you run your thread through the bead and you lay it down by making your first leg of your cross. And that bead will sit on the diagonal. Then I come up, whatever, I come up through the fabric, go through the bead again to make a full cross. And so what that ends up doing is it forces that bead to lay straight. Um, and again, I'll demo this. I don't have any, um, I don't have any examples necessarily to show you right here and now that's like really conducive to this format of filming. Um, so I'll do that at some other point. Um, but that's, that's the only thing that I can think of for you, Bianca. Um, use a full cross and that will make it lay straight. Um, and then she also asked, um, she said that she wants to stitch from her master set. Um, but she's kind of curious as to how do I know when I'm running low on a thread um, or how do I keep on top of it so that I don't run out of thread. And I kind of just run out of thread. So I brought one of my boxes, my full set. It's not quite a full set right now uh, because mania. But um, I store my master set in bobbin boxes. And you can see that some of these bobbins in here are really full and some of them are empty. Uh, running low. One that I know of for sure. For instance, my 347. So like I've got maybe a half length there. Usable, usable thread. Um, I know for a fact that I have an extra skein in my stash just hanging out waiting to be wound on a bobbin for 347. Uh, because I was actually just working in this box to try to get it put back together the other day. Um, but I just run out and then I go get another one. And I know that that is not everybody's situation. And I know especially in Australia, where Bianca is located, um, that's really not the case. I just keep an eye on it. So let's say I go to kit up um, my Ladybird Fairy by Joan Elliott. And I notice that, um, let me pull one that's getting close-ish. Do I have one that's close-ish? Yeah. Okay, so let's say I pull 414. Let's say I need 414 for whatever reason. And I pull my length off and I put it in my little baggie and good to go. And I'm like, mmm, that's, that's getting low. So I will make note of that so that the next time that I'm getting threads, I know that I have to get 414. I know that that's kind of um, it's kind of an unsatisfying answer, but that's the only way that I keep on top of it. I just have a running list of threads that I'm running low on, and get them the next time that I'm able. Um, so I hope that that helps, Bianca. Um, yeah, hope it helps. Okay. Uh, next, I have a question that came from two people, and it's kind of more of a suggestion than an actual question. Um, and this is from Kate at Kate's Crafting Corner, as well as Cassie Stitches. Um, and they, they suggested, when I was talking about my rotation, that maybe I should do my Hade every other weekend. And then I have those weekends free for the other things that I wanted to work on, like I talked about last time. And I really like that. Um, so I am looking at my calendar for August, and I'm looking at a way to try to do that. Great suggestion, y'all. Um, but more on that a little bit later. <laughs> and if you follow me on Instagram, then you already know what's going on here. But anyway. Okay, um, next, I have a question from, again, from two people, um, Emily R. and Queen B. Stitches. And they want to know how in the heck do I count my stitches? Like, do I count each stitch as I do it? Do I count every stitch after the fact? Um, do I have a shortcut? And the answer to that is that, um, let me just preface and say that, guys, I like numbers. I really like numbers. They just make sense to me. Okay? So we'll just start there. Um, all right. So let's say, for example, I am working on Rose Fairy because this is the best example of that um, because I'm usually taking a color and going pretty much cross-country with it. I count after I'm done stitching. 
So let's say Rose Fairy, I worked on it for six days. How did I count those stitches for those six days? I didn't count them until after those six days were done. But I highlight. I highlight the heck out of my patterns if I can. If it's in one of my books that's color, then obviously I don't highlight that. Um, but I highlight like a crazy person. I probably should take some stock in whatever the highlighter brands are. Anyway, so we get to the end of this stitching session. And most patterns are beautifully laid out in 100 stitch blocks. So the every 10 stitches, the grid line is a little bit darker. So you can see where 100 stitches is. So what I do is I look at that block and I count my highlighter blocks in that 100 stitch block. And then I list them out like that. So whatever project this was, the first block had 11 stitches in it, the second block had 27 stitches in it, 17, 43, 30, 50, etc, etc, etc. Okay, so I list them out. Now I could go into a calculator and just punch it in and just whatever. But I don't do that. I do this pyramid adding uh, that I started doing, gosh, I don't, I don't even know when. Um, so I mentally add those two together, add those two together, so you get this second column of numbers. And I keep doing that until I get down to this final number, 575. I have no idea what this was. So I have this little pad of paper next to me um, when I'm in the little table next to me while I'm stitching so that I always have something so that I can do this. And this is actually kind of therapeutic for me. Um, a lot of times I'll get to the end of a stitching week, session, what have you, and I'm like, I didn't do anything. <laughs> like I, did, I accomplished nothing this week. Um, you know, just kind of feeling down about myself. And then I start punching numbers and, and crunching numbers, really. And it makes me feel a little bit better. Like, uh, 575, good grief, I only stitched for three and a half minutes. <laughs> just kidding. Um, so... So that's kind of how I do things. I use a highlighter and I count highlighter blocks in a 100 stitch grid. Um, I have to make it smaller because if I look at the entire pattern and I'm like, I see green highlighter everywhere. I don't even understand what all of this means. Um, I, I just, I have to make it smaller. So there's that. Um, I wanted to print off a free pattern and show you this, but I couldn't the life of me find anything that I was confident that I could use for such a demo. Um, I was going to design something of my own real quick, like a something silly and try to do it that way, but um, yeah, I just, I, I got a little bit behind. So um, if you guys need more clarification, if anybody wants more clarification on how I do this, then I'll do that. I will, I'll design something really quick and demo it some kind of way, some kind of how. Okay. Um, and then the last question comes from Ida. It is knitting related, so I'm going to save it for the knitting uh, section. So as always, everybody, thank you so much for your questions. I can't tell you how much I appreciate it. I like talking to you guys about these things. Um, as is the case with this one, two people have the same question. So if you have a question for me and you're like, ah, I don't want to ask that, that's silly. Um, somebody else might have the same question as you and they are feeling the same way. So just ask it. Um, and then I also want to take a second to just thank everybody so much for your comments and for your kind words after my last video. I know that that thing was a bear. Um, and so I just appreciate you all for, um, for watching it all and for leaving just, just awesome words of encouragement. I really appreciate that. Okay. Next, let's get on to the shout out segment. So I haven't watched Floss Tube this week. Not a whole lot, and it's only been a few days anyway. Um, but the reason for that is that I've just been listening to music a lot. Um, sometimes I get into these phases where I'm like, I don't want to watch Floss Tube. I just want to, I just want to listen to music and just jam out. Or uh, I've spent too much time editing and listening to myself talk <laughs> that I um, 
yeah, that I just, I just need a break from, from the floss tube. Uh, I, ha I did watch a few videos and I've left my comments, but I haven't even touched my watch later list, which is a problem. I really need to get to that. So no shout out this week. Maybe I'll do two next week. Maybe not. We'll see. Okay. Next, let's talk about the whip review. Okay. <laughs> so, um, last Friday when I saw you last, uh, I was getting ready for my next Heaven and Earth Design weekend. And as you all know, I'm working on Faces of Fairy 201 by Heaven and Earth Designs. Art is uh, by Jasmine Beckett Griffin. And preview here of what this looked like at that point. So I got stitching and I had a pretty decent weekend stitching. Um, it was kind of surprising if I'm honest, um, because we did a lot of cleaning on Saturday. Uh, most of the day was spent deep cleaning my kitchen. And we haven't done that in too long. And so like it was, it was a, it was a day. Um, and so we're trying to just, we're spring cleaning like two months late. Um, but I managed over 2000 stitches in the weekend. So that was pretty cool. So we get to Monday morning and Monday morning, I was either supposed to switch to starting my ladybird fairy or birthstone dragons, uh, by Ingleside Imaginarium and ladybird fairy wasn't kitted because I had spent the whole weekend either stitching or cleaning. <laughs> there was no kidding going on. So Ladybird Fairy isn't yet kitted. Um, and I stitched, like I told you, from 7 to about 8.30 in the morning. And I didn't have... I, I didn't want to take the time to spend those first two hours in the morning kitting when I could have just been stitching and having my coffee and having my morning. Um, so I told myself, I was like, all right, I'm just going to stitch on my haid here this morning. And then at some point this afternoon, I will kit up Ladybird Fairy and I'll start that tonight. I ended up working a little bit late on Monday. And so Danny got home and we're kind of figuring out what the rest of our evening is going to look like. And I'm like, I don't feel like kidding right now. I'm just going to stitch on faces. It's fine. It's fine if I get an extra cup, an extra day or so. So at some point on Monday, it dawned on me that this weekend we're going to be out of town. <laughs> um, Danny's uh, summer family reunion is on Saturday. And so we won't be here. Um, I think we're leaving Friday night and we're coming back either Saturday afternoon or Sunday morning. Saturday, Saturday evening, I should say. So like, or we're not going to be here and I am so close to a page finish on hay on faces. So like having to delay that another week, I don't know, not feeling that. So yesterday, Tuesday, I get up in the morning and I'm like, you know what? I'm just going to stitch. It's fine. I'm just going to stitch on what I've got. I still hadn't kitted ladybird fairy. Like this was all just, it was all just lining up. I was taking the lazy way out, if I'm honest. And I think I mentioned that on Instagram. Somebody asked me, uh, weren't you supposed to switch? And I'm, yeah. I was too lazy to, to switch and I didn't feel like kidding. And I also, the sows right now, not feeling the sows. I love the birthstone dragon sow. I am struggling with the fantasy sow, but I love sow stitching. I had this conversation in the comments. Um, of my last video. There's, it's a cool thing, these owls. You get this little piece and then by the end of it you have this great big finish. But I'm just not into that modular stitching. I don't know. I don't know what it is. Whatever. So I just stuck with faces. So here we are this morning and I have 700 stitches left on the page. I'm just gonna finish the page whatever, because I want to get the project done, so I might as well, right? So I'm going to show you here what it looks like now. And it's still on my frame because I'm still stitching on it. Oh, I probably should take those threads down. I will here in just a second, but I talked last time about how I pull up my threads out of the way. 
So you can see that I'm getting ready to work this block because these threads are hanging here ready for me. Oh, and here's what she will look like finished. But you've seen enough of her. Like, we know. <laughs> okay, so let me take these threads down so that you can see the swan. Check it out. I have a swan head and neck in there. There we go. My spatial. I'm all confused. Anyway, so swan head. And let's see. I really should have taken this off the frame. If I was smart, I would have. Oh, prop. Hey, that's cool. Um, so this right here, that was the last... I'm going to peek around. Uh, that was the last really confetti heavy section of this page. And I mean, let's face it, I have 700 stitches left to go. So like there shouldn't be, there shouldn't be much in the way of confetti left. Right. Um, so I finished that up last night and I have just a little bit of the orb left to do. Page is coming to a close. So Davina uh, of Mummyla Stitches and I, we're both stitching this design and she started hers this year and she's two-thirds of the way through and I'm like I started mine over a year ago and I'm behind so I told Davina that she really needs to spend some good time in Ex Machina she's got a lot of work left to do on that one <laughs> see if I can catch up so she told me she'd give me a month <laughs> there's no way I'm gonna catch up even if I do just stitch on this until then there's no way I'm gonna catch up um, because she's got essentially all three pages in the first two columns done. And yeah, that's not going to happen. Um, but that's okay. I'm going to, I'm going to make an effort of it. Do you guys remember a couple years ago? Two years ago, actually, almost to the day. Um, actually, I think it is to the day. It is. Two years ago, Cross Stitch and Discuss ran this event called The One, where you picked a project to work on starting on the 12th of July to the end of the month. Do you remember what I was working on? Mini Pearl by Rachel Anderson. And that is the point where I finished it. 12 days. 13 days after that event started, I finished Mini Pearl, my very first Heaven and Earth design finish. Um, and so, in thinking about that, um, I was watching a video from Lorna, Lady Bird Stitcher, um, who talked about how she goes through these phases with her stitching. And subconsciously, I seem to be going through the same thing. Um, I feel like starting a whole bunch of things right now, but I'm like only working on one thing for an extended period of time. I don't, I don't do that. Not hardly ever. Now I know that five days hardly qualifies as an extended period of time, but I don't necessarily feel like switching. You know, like I'm going to finish this page here in the next few days. I'm immediately going to want to go up here and start page three, which will be my page four. So I don't know, I don't know. I must, like, on some subconscious level, be a one-at-a-time stitcher. But, like, really a serial starter. Anyway, that's some existential thinking going on in my head these days. Faces of Fairy. Love the way that this is turning out. This is a small design, and the details are just outrageous. It looks like that globe orb ball glass thing that this one is sitting in. It looks like it's got like reflecting from the light. Just so cool. Love heaven and earth designs. Um, this is what I'm talking about with that needle minder there. That's the screen from no name. That's what I love about Kate's needle minders. They are so great for threads. Let me see if I can demo this. Ugh. All right, so I need to get these out of my way. Drape them over there. Out of my way. Love that. Okay. So that's all I've worked on since we last talked. 
Um, and we'll, we'll see where that takes me, how long it takes me to finish that page. Um, maybe tomorrow, probably not till Friday. So, so there's that. Okay, next, let's move on and talk about plants. I still have Ladybird Fairy as well as Lady Rose. Sorry for calling her Lady of the Rose. She is Lady Rose. Um, I still have them to start. I was going to start Lady Rose yesterday, um, and I posted in the Joan Elliott July Facebook group some fabric options. And after looking at her for a while, I'm changing her. I'm doing a color conversion. Um, and most of you have probably seen this already, but Heidi um, Nugget, I don't know if that's how you pronounce her last name. Probably, maybe, who knows. Anyway, she did this beautiful conversion of Mirabilia's Stargazer, and I'm sure most of you will recognize it. She's wearing the cream dress. She has the brown overcoat with the green skirt. Beautiful. So I'm going to do that. Because Lady Rose kind of gives me that, um, that impression of a woman on the cliff and she's like waiting for her bow to return from being at sea. I don't know. She gives me that vibe. And so she's like, she's putting out the flat, the rose, like, um, like a wish kind of a thing. It's just kind of the vibe that it, that it gives me. That's what I'm going to do. So I, I haven't started her yet because I've got to iron out that color conversion. So, yeah, so I'm still going to start those for Joan and Leah July. Um, one thing that I realized while looking at the calendar today is that tomorrow is July 13th. And July 13th has some relevance in my life. Uh, on July 13th, 1998, that is the year that my grandma passed away. And uh, my maternal grandma. Um, and... She has had a very large influence on my life, um, even still to this day, even though I haven't had her in my life for the last 19 years, um, she still influences me. So every year, um, for the last few years, I have worked on this piece here, Elizabeth by Glendon Place, because my grandma's name was Elizabeth. Uh, Needleminder here from Juliet Nifty Neil Nannies. It is a flapper girl because my grandma was born in the 20s. Um, so yeah, so this is going to get some attention tomorrow. I'm going to work on it for a little bit tomorrow. Um, even if I only do 20 minutes or whatever, um, I'm going to put a little bit of, of work into that. And that is on a piece of 32 Count Belfast in Buttercup by Under the Sea Fabrics. And here is where I am starting out. Uh, I last worked on this during Mania. And I got part of the way down the stem, so I think I might work on some Krennic tomorrow. Because I do have one spool of the Fuchsia Krennic, so maybe I'll do some of that. Just put a little sparkle into my day while I'm thinking about my grandma and my, grand my grandpa. Danny calls his granddad's granddad. Um, and they aren't, they aren't with us anymore either. Um, and so I've gotten into this habit of saying granddad, but he was always my grandpa. Anyway, so I'll be working on that tomorrow. And then, dog days of summer. So this is an event that's being hosted by Cross Stitch Finish Line. And when uh, Joe and Terry first announced it, I was like, I don't have any room for that right now. I'm trying to focus on just a few whips. I'm not trying to rotate every day etc. Then Lorna, <laughs> Lady Bird Stitcher yesterday, I was watching another of her videos and she mentioned that she's doing this and I was like, you know, I could do that too. Maybe. So here's, I'm going to, I'm going to do it. And I was able to fit a year of whips piece into every category, but with some with some notes, shall we say. Okay, so I'm gonna run through this real quickly for you. Each of the six days spells out the word summer. So day one is for S, um, and it is to stitch something that has to do with the seashore. 
And so on Friday, I will be start. I will be working on not starting. I will be working on Under the Moonlight by Passione Rigamo. And we have a mermaid here, and she is sitting on the shore. Or a rock, not on the shore, but mermaids, seashore, it adds up. It all makes sense. Plus, you can see the sea. And you can see the shore. It all, it all works. Okay, enough about that. Uh, this is on a 32 count bow fast in Lady of the Lake by Hand Dyed Fabrics by Stephanie. And I haven't worked on her in a while. She's on a fat half of fabric. So there we have it. Just the back of this thing is kind of crazy. Um, so I'm going to be working on her skin on Friday. Uh, because I've got all of that left to fill in. Lots left to do on this piece. Um, this is a Year of Whips piece. Uh, I can talk about this at another time, but my Year of Whips goals have changed a little bit. I've set different goals for each of the projects, and my goal for this one is just to get the skin done this year. If I get the skin done and that's it, then I will count this a success for Year of Whips. So, yeah, a little bit left to do. Okay. Um, however, this one is a little bit contingent on things. Like I said, I want to finish the page on my head. So if I don't do that tomorrow, then I'm gonna um, I'm gonna focus on it on Friday. And we are traveling, like I told you. So I have something else that's on its way that will be here in time. I'm almost certain of it. Um, that I'm going to start on Friday that's very portable. I'm not taking stitching with me. This is not that kind of a weekend. Um, so, and what I got was the Sea Turtle by Mill Hill. Just a very simple but very pretty design. I found that I don't have any Mill Hill kits that's in any way, shape, or form summer related. Except for a butterfly, but that doesn't count for any of this. So, um, so that I will be working on... Um, if I don't get to Under the Moonlight on Friday. Just kind of all depends and I'll let you know. Okay, day two um, is for you. Stitch on something to do with umbrellas. Um, and so you need an umbrella if it's raining, you need an umbrella if it's hot or if it's sunny, um, you need an umbrella for shade. So again, I'm not sure if we're coming back on Saturday. If we do, then I'll be working on this. And this is kind of counterintuitive, but it's fine. Uh, Pumpkin Patch Farm Sampler by the Victoria Sampler. And I'm going to bring it in close for that bottom block. Do you see this, uh, this stand here? It has an umbrella. Ha! <laughs> Perfect. Love that. Uh, this is the block that I'm currently on. And so that's, that's pretty great. If I can manage to work my way down to that umbrella on that day, very cool. So let me show you where I'm at. This is on a 32 count Belfast in something moon. That's what I'm calling it from now on. And so here's where we are. I haven't worked on this since Christmas Day. So I'm looking forward to getting back to it. Love this design. I know that so many of you also love this design. It's beauty. I hope that we're that I'll be able to get to it. But if not, it's okay. If we are not coming back on Saturday night, then I am going to work on that sea turtle again. Um, because you see sea turtles at the ocean, and I don't know about y'all, but I am very fair-skinned, and so I am always seeking shade if I'm at the ocean. So that's how I'm making that connection there. Um, in order to see sea turtles, I need an umbrella. <laughs> okay. All right. Uh, day three, which will be Sunday the 16th. Um, day three is for M, any designer or pattern that begins with M. Again, I had to make a little bit of a stretch. My year of whips, I have zero that actually start with M. However, this one could because this design comes from a book. And if you got this book at your local library, it would be filed under Mayhew, comma, Jane Netley. So that starts with an M. If 
from the Cross Stitch Safari book. I'll finally be getting back to my elephants. Oh, I'm so excited. So, I love this book. This is what they will look like finished. And I'm stitching this on a 32 count linen in aqua by Fabric Flare. This is a printed fabric. And this project is almost two years old. Oh, I love this. I cannot wait to spend some good time on this. This is my focus project for August and yeah, I'm looking forward to spending some time. My goal is to put about an hour into each of these, but we'll see what happens with that. Okay, next day four um, is also for M. Um, and this is, uh, M is for munchies. So a stitch on something related to food. And my year of whips, I could make, I could make the leap to food, like some people eat roses, so I could work on my rose fairy. Or, uh, you know, etc., etc. But I decided to go, um, I got lucky and was able to go with something a little bit more literal. And that is the uh, Jingles collection by Lizzie Kate. And I am currently about to start this block here, the Noel block. And on the top, you can see these borders, they look like those peppermints. Totally edible. And not only that, but there's a cup of coffee and some cookies. Perfect! So I'll be working on that block on this day. And this is on the called for 32 count amber linen from Wichelt. And here is where I am with that. So I still have some bonus detail to put in here under the Ho 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 holiday block, but I'm just going to go ahead and work on Noel for to um, to meet this challenge and it's a Christmas in July piece which I was hoping to be able to work in because I wanted to do some Christmas in July so there's that okay next E um, E is for eternity work on that project that seems like it's taking forever I got a lot of those <laughs> but of my year of whips there's one particular standout That is the Fantasy Sal by Lakeside Needlecraft and Doreen Jones. Doesn't this work out perfect? This thing's gonna take me an eternity to finish. And like, it's not a seems like, it is. <laughs> so, yeah. So this one's gonna get some attention here on, when is that, Tuesday? Yes, Tuesday, the 18th. So there's that. Um, and that will work out nicely because next week I hope to make a little bit of a Sal's week kind of week. Okay, finally, we get to the last day, day six, which is next Wednesday. Um, and day six is for our stitch using a red floss. And so I decided to pull out another project whose goal has changed a little bit. Um, and that is my Shades of Wine, which is a shade of red, um, by Northern Expressions Needlework. Preview here of what this will look like finished. I'm stitching it on 40 count alabaster Newcastle linen by Zweigart. <laughs> you remember last week how I mentioned that I was never going to get this done this year? Do you see why? That's why. <laughs> no way. There's no way. Um, I'm stitching this in the called for dinky dye silks. My new goal is just this corner. If I can get this corner done this year, then I'm going to feel a lot better about myself. And by this corner, I do mean from here to the center of the design to the center of the design. So that whole corner. Um, so I still have quite a, a considerable amount left to do there, but I don't. I'm not looking at it like I've got the whole thing to do. So there is Shades of Wine. So that is the Dog Days of Summer. Um, yeah, I told you guys that I wasn't really feeling like rotating projects so frequently, but I just kind of feel like doing this thing. 
Um, so that's it for plans for now until the next week. I will update you next Wednesday on how it all goes. Okay, up next we have retail therapy, and this is going to be a very short segment. I have just needle minders this go around. I have some things that are in my mailbox. I have some things that are en route, but none of them are here with me right now. So um, the first is um, all of these are needle minders and two of them are like highly sought after. So I'm gonna start with the one, I'm gonna start with this one. Um, and these are both from Juliet Nifty Needle Lannies. Um, Oh, the needle minder obsession has not stopped. There are others. Yeah, whatever. It's fine. Uh, so, uh, the narwhal with the rainbow horn. Oh my goodness. That's, that's just gorgeous. And then I wanted to get one of the poison bottles because um, when Hortus Venenum comes out, I'm going to need a needle minder. So, might as well be a poison bottle. And... I have no idea what that is. It kind of makes me think of an absinthe bottle, but there is strange writing on it. No clue what that is. Anyway, love those. Uh, Julie said that she was able to scour up a few more of the narwhals. Um, so check out her group and see what the status is with that, if you're interested. Okay, this next one um, I got from Gina's Unique Boutique from her Facebook group. Again, everybody lost their minds for this thing, and I, I count myself among them. Um, so, yeah, this beauty, my pumpkin collection continues. Um, love that. When I take it off the card, because the card is very colorful, but it's kind of hard to see anything. Yeah, isn't that pretty? Love it. Love me some pumpkins. So. Okay, so that's it for retail therapy. Like I said, not a whole lot, but there will probably be some more next time. Uh, so let's move on to currently obsessing. Okay, so let's start with, with music. Um, and I told you guys that I have been listening to a lot of music. Uh, do you ever just put on your playlist and you just hit shuffle and then you are sort of reconnected with songs that you loved six years ago that you forgot that you had in your library. That's been happening to me this week. So I just hit shuffle and I just let it do whatever it's gonna do. And I have a very eclectic taste in music. It ranges. I have anywhere from classic to punk, emo to country, hard rap to not, like rap, we'll say. Uh, Hip hop. I mean, I have I have a gamut of things. So it's been really cool to go back and listen to some of this old music. Now, what inspired this was that um, I don't know what her what her new channel name is, um, but I will link it down below. Um, and her name is Susanna. And I was on uh, tour to Stitches team with Susanna last year. Um, she posted on Instagram earlier this week, uh, tell me your favorite song, and that will let me know more about you. And I knew what my favorite song was instantly, without having to contemplate it for, for more than a millisecond. And that is called, it's Name, by the Goo Goo Dolls. I love the Goo Goo Dolls. It is on my bucket list to see them live, preferably in Buffalo, because that's where they're from, but... I'll pretty much take anything at this point. Um, they were in Harrisonburg, I think, last summer. Wish I'd known that, because that's like two hours from me, but anyway, it's fine. Um, that song name is, it gets to me every time. If it's on the radio and it reaches 317, um, I stop whatever I'm doing and turn up the volume as loud as it can go because the guitar solo in the, in name just gets to me. It just, it's like wrapping myself up in a hug. It is so good. Um, and so that's kind of what inspired me to start listening to some of my older music because, I mean, this is the Goo Goo Dolls, like the 90s. Um, and yeah, so that was 
that was pretty that was pretty good trip down memory lane just like listening to some of that music that I was into at the time or that I got into a little bit later in life. Um, that was pretty cool. So, okay, next, uh, watching, still watching Big Brother, but, um, and as I talked about last time, my team was on the outs, the power has shifted, my team is now on the outs, still. Um, so that's great. Um, and, but I mean, you know, that's, that's how it goes with Big Brother. Okay, but what I'm currently obsessed with is Ink Master. Ink Master is a show on Spike, and it's a tattoo competition. <laughs> There's not a single tattoo that lives in my house. Neither Danny nor I have any tattoos yet. I have been tattoo dreaming for years now, and I've gotten a little bit more realistic <laughs> as things have gone on. Um, as I've gotten older, for a long time I wanted um, a rib cage tattoo from like underarm to hip. Um, but watching this competition and knowing my pain tolerance, probably not the best idea. Um, but Ink Master, I love this show. It's so dramatic. It's Dave Navarro is a terrible live show host, but the show is just fun. It's just, it's just interesting. And I love seeing the artwork that's coming out of these people. Um, in fact, my tattoo artist that I want to, to create my tattoos, I was introduced to via this show. Um, one of them is Jesse Smith, who is in Richmond, Virginia. Um, getting to see him, to have him do one of his creatures is going to take, um, a miracle, but that's, that's the hope. Um, and then the other two are two of the girls from last season, um, Ryan Ashley and um, Kelly Kelly Dottie. Um, both of them have just a very cool style that I really, really like. So anyway, um, obsessing about Ink Master. It was just on last night. We don't normally watch it live, but last night we did because Big Brother is on three nights a week. So we make sure that we prioritize some of these shows to get them out of the way. Um, so we watched Ink Master last night, so it's been in my head. Um, so yeah, does anybody else watch Ink Master? Um, let me know. Curious. Who's your favorite? Um, okay, next, let's move on to what I'm currently reading, um, obsessed about reading-wise. Um, and technically, I'm not reading anything. However, I'm about to. Um, so I believe... I'm not even going to say that because I can't remember who it is. The publisher, Bloomsbury, there it is, Bloomsbury put up on their Instagram and on their Facebook um, late last week that they are running a, um, a read-along for the next eight weeks um, in anticipation of the next book in this series. And I'm about to tell you what the series is, so don't worry. I have only read the first book in the series, and there are currently six out, I think including this novella collection, I'm way far behind. And I've wanted to read this series, so I thought, you know, this is a really great way to kickstart my reading again. It's the first few books, you have a whole week to read, and they're only like 300 pages. Um, the last two current books are gargantuan, and so you get two weeks to read those. So that's cool. Um, so I was like, sweet, I'm going to jump in and I'm going to join this. Um, and I have talked about this author a few times. It is Sarah J. Moss. Um, she authored the A Court of Thorns and Roses, Roses series, which I talked to you guys about last time. Not last time, but I have talked to you about that before. Um, and then she also has this other series that is really her claim to fame. And it is young adult fantasy and is called the Throne of Glass series. So this is the Read Throne of Glass read-along. I'm going to input the... Um, the Instagram, Facebook post here so that you can see it. But, like, don't trust the calendar too much. Um, Ashley, um, who is Ashley E.M. here on YouTube, she's a big Sarah J. Mouse fan as well. Um, she pointed out that the calendar is all jacked up, and she's right, it's all jacked up. So ignore that. But basically it runs from Sunday to Sunday. Or whatever timeline you want. I'm going to run it Sunday to Sunday. So this week we're starting with the novellas. 
um, and that is The Assassin's Blade, which is the novella collection. And it is okay to read this before you read the first book in the series. Um, it gives you some backstory that you don't otherwise get in the first book. That's my understanding. I haven't read this yet. Um, but it's my understanding that it's okay to read this before you get to the first one. So this is The Assassin's Blade. Um, and it is a collection of, I wonder if it tells me how many. Oh, there's a cool map. Maps, maps, maps. Maps and books are great. Yeah, there's five. Um, five total novellas. So, um, that is that. Then we have book two, or excuse me, book two of this read-along, but book one of the series is Throne of Glass. And... I won't tell you how many copies I went through trying to get this version, but it was a lot. Anyway, so that's the first book in the series. I've read this a couple times, and I'll probably listen to the audiobook for this one because I have the audiobook for it, and might as well. So there's that. And then the next book in the series is Crown of Midnight. That is beautiful. Absolutely love them. Um, I am a little bit of a cover snob, and so... I wanted to make sure that they matched, so I got all matching ones. That's why I went through several copies trying to get that one. Anyway, so that's kind of midnight, and then... Um, and then the next book that's coming out is Tower of Dawn, which is receiving some criticisms already because it's a little bit different. Um, but I'm curious. Like, I just want to get into the series. So I'm going to reread it. I'm going to read it, and I will let you know. So that's, that's what I'm currently obsessing over. Throne of Glass, Ink Master, and Name by Goo Goo Dolls. All sorts of strange things. Okay. Next, let's move on to the knitting. And this is going to be a very short segment um, because I've only worked on one thing and my knitting bug is retreating, shall we say. Okay, so first let's get to the question. Um, Ida asks if I recommend any good YouTube videos on how to knit a shawl. Nope, I don't. Um, if anybody else does, let's crowdsource a little bit and let me know if you know of any YouTube tutorials on how to knit a shawl. I jumped in feet first, as I do. Um, but I jumped, in, I jumped in into the shallow end um, in this case. Uh, with stitching, I jumped into the deep end and started a Heaven and Earth design as my second ever project. But this, I went a little bit easy. Um, and this is the reason that I'm wearing this shirt today, actually. Um, because this is my Hitchhiker Shawl. And this is by Martina Bem. And it is a very simple shawl. It's more a scarf than anything. Um, but there we have it. So, it's really simple because it's just garter stitch. So you just knit. There's no purling action going on. And it makes this really nice shape that's really easy to throw on and take off. And I'm not going to do that because it's warm. Um, but the reason that these two go together is that this yarn is Leading Man Fiber Arts in their sock base. I don't know what base they call that, but in their sock base in the No Good Deed colorway. And No Good Deed is the is a title song in a title of a song in Wicked. Um, and that's where they got the inspiration for this colorway. Uh, the greens and the pinks and the grays. This is one of my most favorite knits. Um, it's so, it's just so wearable. I wish that I had made it a little bit deeper because I like the deeper shawls. I don't like the scarf so much, but nonetheless, this is a really great starter shawl because the instructions are great, and it's simple. Um, and I'm going to link a couple of other shawls that I think would be good to check out. 
Um, I'll link their Ravelry, Ravelry pages in the description box for anybody to check out. They are introductions to shawls, but they aren't, they aren't tutorials on how to do it. Um, some of them require strange shawl things, like a garter tab cast on. That is a very common shawl thing. Um, and so you can find tutorials for that on YouTube, but as far as how to knit a shawl, I don't know that there necessarily are any. I could be wrong, so let me know if you know of any YouTube tutorials on how to do that. Okay. Next, let's talk about what I'm currently knitting. I've knit on one thing since I last saw you, and I haven't knit a whole lot on it. And that is my Vila shawl by Curious Handmade and Helen Stewart. And it's curling a little bit um, because I cast on with needles that were really too small for this, but it's fine. They will block out and they won't curl so much. And I've just been knitting chevron stripes. Um, I am at 10% on this shawl. I am way behind on my 14 rows a day. I'm not even trying to keep up at this point. Um, as I said, um, I my knitting bug is quieting a lot. I'm really just not, I'm not feeling it. Um, and I'm not sure why that is, because this is really great knitting. I mean, it's, it's not difficult. It's memorizable. I haven't had to look at my pattern in a long time. But I'm just not feeling the knitting right now. So there's that. That's really all I have to say about it. Um, the yarns, I guess I'll tell you those again. Madeline Tash Pashmina, which is a sport weight merino silk cashmere blend in denim, which is the blue. The white is farmhouse white. And the color that I will be using for the lace is weathered frame, which is just like a soft brown. And that's all I have for knitting, y'all. I know it's kind of sad. I know that some of you really like the knitting segment. Um, I'm hoping that this is just temporary. Um because I have a lot on the needles and I need to bring things down. Um, and I have plans for knitting, which are kind of important to me. So um, we'll see. Kind of, we'll kind of see how it goes. It may be dependent that I just need a finish to try to feel a little bit better because I have a lot of projects that have so much left to go on them. So we'll see. Okay, so I just paused and had a look at the video, and we're at about 50 minutes or so um, with some edits and things. So what I think I'm going to do is I'm actually going to save the 20 random facts for a different video, um, and we'll just end this one here. We'll call it a day. Maybe I'll still try to do that stitch with me thing. Um, but yeah, we'll just, we'll just cut it off here. So... I just want to thank everybody so much for watching. Thank you for all of your kind comments. And um, I am going to work on replying to comments. I was doing that this morning, but I ran out of time. So I'll work on doing that. And um, I'm also going to start getting ready for my whip parade. Ideally, I'm going to do that tomorrow, but I don't make any promises for that. Only because I have some work to do, both stitching as well as um, actual work work stuff. So we shall see when that happens. Until I see you guys next, though, I hope you have a great stitching week, a great stitching day. Um, thanks so much for watching, and as always, be kind.